everybody, welcome to Birdtech. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing Udemy's first quarter results. All right, welcome back. So Udemy's first quarter results are in and sure enough, look at that, the price has sparked here. So I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be doing technical analysis and this is the number one video that you need to know and listen to if you want to invest in Udemy. So yesterday at around, uh, I think five o'clock Eastern time, they released their uh, their call as well as their uh, as their first quarter results here. Now, believe it or not, today in pre market, Udemy was actually below ten, and if you had purchased that time, you would have made actually like twenty percent. It was quite quite interesting. I'm not sure why uh, the off hours was below ten. Um, it, it's obviously a small cap stock, and there's lots of volatility here. Now, I'm going to be talking about this here. It went all the way up, um, and we'll be doing the technical analysis here. But today. Again, yesterday was the Fed meeting, and you can see that today is not a good day for the stock market here. Uh, things keep on going down here, and you can see that's basically what's happening in the markets here, that interest rates are rising, and we'll see what happens with that here. But let's take a look at the technical analysis first, and then we're going to go into some of the highlights, and then I'm going to do my comparison as well. So. The reason I haven't done a Udemy video in a while is that, well, there wasn't really much to talk about and, well, uh, frankly, the viewers were getting bored. Um, so what you can see here, there was a big downtrend and that downtrend was actually confirmed and now it's broken. And you can see that in this candle, it all it got all the way up to about two, uh, 1220, which is huge, by the way. And then now it's kind of down a little bit more, but still, this is huge. This is a pretty big. Um, this is a pretty big move here. And uh, you know, if I just if I go to kind of my stock page, I think it's the top one today. Uh, but nevertheless, um, you can see here that it has clearly broken this trend line here. And the question that you need to answer is: this buying or is this shorts um, covering? Okay. And there's and if you don't know how that is, you can short a stock, but when a short covers their position, it's just, it's just as much like a buy here. And that's why you get short squeezes like GameStop or AMC, or this can happen in commodities. Uh, but like, and a lot, and because the stock market is so, uh, there's so much financial leverage, there's a lot of short interest here. And I believe that uh, there, there was a lot of short interest on Udemy. And the thing is, is that what you need to know and understand is whether or not this green line is going to close again around 10 and continue to go down here, right? And the thing is, is that you want this to bounce off of this trend line here and start a new trend going up here. So you see how this line is going down. Well, if we were to zoom out maybe six months in the future, you have a line going up all the way uh, to, the right, uh, to the right and up, right? That's what you want to see here. And otherwise, as I've mentioned in my previous technical analysis of Udemy, the steepness of the downtrend might go down. So before the, this, uh, it, was, it was around here. So that's a deep line. And then it was about here. That's not as steep. And then it was here, not as steep. And now it's here. Again, you can see that, you know, it's going to eventually, even if it goes down like this, right? That's still a downtrend. What you really want is to see it go the opposite way, right? So let's say there, unfortunately, this isn't the, the best chart here, but basically like if you wanted to, for example, if this were to continue to go up here, right? You want this to kind of be the uptrend here. That's what you're really looking for. But for now, you can see that. And again, I know this is very simple technical analysis here, but like you can see that this trend line is down. And of course, it's not necessarily because Udemy is down. It's because, well, the market is down. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some of these er earnings here. And that's not the one that I was looking for. This is the one that I was looking for. Okay, so uh, th this this is a very good site here that shows kind of the, um, the potential upside here. 28, which is around where the IPO price was. I believe it was around 29. So that's what everyone's here. But there has been some people lowering their targets here. And you can see that there's all these price analysts here, right? So you can see here that this is, they're moving it down to 15 and 17, right? And 15 is is literally 50% below the IP, uh, IPO price. So that's interesting that they're, they're doing that here. Now, of course, I want this to go up to 40 to 60 to 100. You know, I don't want 
you and me to go below 10 just because I wouldn't be good for my business. And, you know, it's I don't take pleasure in you and me going down here. But it seems like the, the consensus is there. Now, like I said, in many other of these videos here, um, you can see here that it dipped briefly to 968 and then it closed above 10. 10 is a huge psychological marker. Once 10 gets breached and goes below, then that's going to be resistance. That's going to be hard resistance to to uh, beat. And then the the obviously the next one down is like eight and five, the next support level. So you really don't want this to go below ten. So like I've said, it looks like you can see that there is still a huge price. Everything says buy here, and we'll see. If there's a lot of short interest, we could actually get up to this price here. But then if shorts get covered, then what can happen is they they can get reshorted at that price. And, you know, if we look at some other meme stocks, specifically GameStop and AMC, they had a lot of short interest on it and still do. I think AMC is the most shorted stock in the stock market right now. So the short squeeze in that could be massive, right? So as you can see, even if this is a short squeeze, and look at that, things have gone up quite a bit here. So even if this is a short squeeze, it means that someone has covered their shorts because they've done such a good job. So why is this price going up? And as you can see, you know, it has gone up quite a bit even since I've started talking about it. So I want to kind of read to you some of the highlights over the year. I'm going to go into my analysis about this here. And then I have a handy little chart that can show you the true potential of Udemy. Okay, so first of all, the revenue totaled 152 million up 22%. So good, okay? Net loss was a little bit more and you can see that it was 18 compared to 50, so not bad. Now, the big thing I want to, uh, to look at this here is the Udemy for business and the consumer marketplace here, okay? So first of all, the Udemy business revenue is up 77% over year. The business segment was up profit-wise, so that's good. So, the, so these are the reasons why the shorts have kind of left here or people are buying once we figure out exactly what that is. Uh, recurring revenue was up 80%. Customers was, business customers was 11,000, you know, 49%. And the retention rate was 120%. That's a really big one, okay? So they're into selling subscriptions, et cetera. Okay, consumer revenue, this is the marketplace, is down 87 million, okay? So you can see that Udemy for Business is more, and it's down 1%. The gross profit was more, which is because they squeeze as much as they can from the instructors here. And then uh, the consumer segment was down about 2%, okay? So what can we surmise from this? Well, basically they're focusing on Udemy for Business, okay? And they're focusing on the Udemy for Business because it is a subscription and it's B2B. Now, that poses some risks as well as rewards. Now, but here's the thing though. When you do that, the risk and reward is much bigger, okay? Because so sales are really tough with B2B. They can take months to close, but once you get them, they're kind of locked in, okay? And so this particular reason here, it's all this Udemy for Business stuff, is why the stock price is up today so bigly, right? Shorts have said, well, this is probably not gonna be a thing. It's, it could be another thing. If they are shorting the stock and they've covered it, what, what that could mean is that the hedge fund that did it said it's not worth shorting anymore, right? It's not gonna get below 10 because a lot of times shorts get too greedy and they've been punished relentlessly over the last couple of years because of the meme stocks. So, you know, if they've covered it like literally around 10, right? They, they don't think it's going to go below 10 is really what it comes down to. And that's pretty much what that is. This is really good for the business here. And so you might get some long-term uh, gains from this here, but the consumer revenue is down and that's not good. What you really want to see is healthy growth in the consumer revenue, because as I've talked a lot about this in the past, is that new people are not going to go to Udemy, okay? The top people that are providing the content for Udemy for business I have been the same for the last four or five years. And they're kind of like, they're almost like glorified employees, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just the way they do things all in all. But the consumer, you know, if I'm good at producing courses, good at bringing my own traffic, I'm not even going to touch you to me at all because you're going to look at this and you're going to say, okay, well, I'm not going to make money on the marketplace. I'm going to go to Thinkific or Teachable and do that here. And so while the top talent might be in Udemy for business, they're not attracting new talent. And so that's kind of a big thing. And that's pretty much uh, one thing that you need, uh, you really need to understand is that new talent 
it is very difficult to be a solo instructor on Udemy. It is very time consuming, it's very demanding, and you can get burnt out. I've seen it happen all the time. And there's another way to solve this here, is to get people to make courses and eventually graduate to a bigger role, just like they do in the film industry. So you start out as maybe an actor or somewhere on the production set and eventually become a director. That's the kind of uh, career path that is absent from the e-learning industry. And it's because of this here, right? They want solo instructors because they don't want scalable businesses to make it on Udemy here. Now, there's a ton of things they could do right and i've talked about these at length in in the past year but essentially they don't really want the consumer marketplace to grow and so this is kind of like reading in between the lines they're focusing on udemy for business only and it seems like you know to be fair it has worked right the stock price is up bigly today and well basically it's so far so good now uh the loss of uh, buyers again they're just not focusing on it here okay and so the first quarter highlights, there's a lot of um, uh, going through these here. Uh, <laughs> so if you read uh, South Korea, uh, they they partnered with Wujin, which is a, a big Korean company here. They closed Udemy's in the People's Republic of China through a partner, um, Sanjay. I'm pronouncing that wrong. I apologize here. And then they both, they have a bunch of new big corporate there. So it's, it's not necessarily a terrible thing. But notice, if you read through all these, none of these have to do anything with the consumer marketplace, okay? And so they're looking at the financial outlook. It's gonna be 640 million, not terrible, but it could be better. And so all of these things that they, they've been doing here is basically, you know, they're focusing on recurring revenue, monthly recurring revenue, annually recurring revenue, that's MRR and ARR. And because of that, uh, you know, it seems like the stock is doing well. Okay, and that's exactly what you would expect because these big business accounts are very difficult to get and once you get them, they're hard to leave. Problem is though, there could be massive competition on the horizon. And who knows uh, what, what will happen there, but let's take a look at mostly this comparison here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken a look at all the kind of competitors that necessarily competitor with Udemy, just like competitors in the marketplace space, right? So if you're a smart person, are you gonna go to Udemy or are you gonna go to any of these other places here? So let's take a look at the percentage here. So Apple and Google have like a 15 to 30% charge here. That could change depending on the antitrust suits that are going through courts right now. But you know, they have a small business is 15%. Steam is 30%. Kickstarter is 8%. Amazon has a six to 45%. Um, and then Epic is five. Now Epic is newer to this. So you'll, so I'll be talking about that in a second. And then Udemy is 66 at 75, right? So right off the bat, uh, their, the percentage is just, it's not very good for the top talent, right? Why would I, I could go work for Apple, make an app, maybe even work for Apple, Google, Steam, all these other companies, or I could go get a third or 25% of the revenue on Udemy. Okay. Affiliates. Okay. So these ones do not have affiliates, but Kickstarter does, Amazon does. Amazon, you know, if anything, this should be huge because Amazon has the biggest affiliate here. Epic, no, and Udemy, yes. Udemy still does affiliates, even though they've kind of nerfed them a lot here. Subscriptions, and these are on the personal side. These are not on the uh, Udemy for Business side or the corporate side here. I can make a subscription for my apps, for my games. I can't do it for my Kickstarters, obviously. Amazon does have that functionality. And then Epic, not currently, but I bet you they will in the future. They probably should. I, I should probably reach out to Epic and kind of talk to them about this. But anyway, they also have no big thing here, okay? Bundles, yes, I can bundle here. And now I can't bundle my Steam games here, uh, but they do come in uh, features only. Yes, I can bundle my previous Kickstarters within other Kickstarters, which is great. Love doing that. Amazon, I don't think you can do bundles here. Steam, no. And then Udemy, definitely not here. The S&P 500 here. Uh, so which companies are on the S&P 500? Apple, yes. Google, yes. Steam, private company. Kickstarter, private company. Amazon, yes. Epic, no. Private company. And Udemy, no. Okay? So that's a whole topic for a whole other video. But what would, what would, you, what would it take for Udemy to be included in the S&P 500? Okay? That's a good question you need to answer here, okay? Marketing companies. Can I, as a company, go hire out a marketing company to market my products on their platform? Apple, yes, there's many, many. Steam, many. 
Kickstarter, many. Amazon, many. Epic, no, right? Few. And this is all, this might as well be a no because there's, there's practically none existent. There are people that do this, but they're freelancers. They're very small. So this should almost be a no, okay? And I should almost even make that red because it's basically kind of like that here, okay? Now, are there million dollar companies on these platforms? There are many. Yep, Google, many. Steam, many. Kickstarter, many. Amazon, many. Epic, many. Udemy, few. There's a few up there, but not many, right? And that's a problem, okay? So if I want to build a million dollar company, I'm going to go to these companies. I am not going to go to Udemy to start a million dollar company, okay? Billion dollars a company. There are many. Google, many. Steam, many. Kickstarter, no. I don't think there's a billion dollar company to go into Kickstarter. Kind of, kind of weird. <laughs> uh, there are many on Amazon. Few, because it's kind of small. The Epic game is few. And then Udemy, no. There are none, right? There's just none. Sales-based algorithm. Now, I've talked about this in many times in the past. Basically what it is. So let's take Amazon, for example, because they're probably the best example, and Apple as well. If you go to the App Store right now and you look at the top free apps, the top spot has the most amount of downloads. And it's very very logical okay well spot one has the most amount of downloads in a given time i think it's 15 minutes i'm not actually sure uh what it is but so if spot one has let's say 50,000 downloads for the 15 minutes spot two is going to have less than 15,000, and then spot three is going to have less than that etc cetera, etc cetera. and that goes all the way down to the hundreds of apps that are on the app store here google's the same way steam is the same way so if you go to steam go to the top selling guess what Number one spot has the top selling, right? There's the top selling amount of sales, right? And all of these companies have the top talent, right? And they know what they're doing. And they've done it that way for a very specific reason. And they want people to make these million and billion dollar companies and come to their platform. That's the kind of difference here. So how many of these companies have these sales-based algorithms? Apple, yes. Google, yes. Steam, yes. Kickstarter, yes. Amazon, yes. Epic, yes. Udemy, no. It is not a sales-based algorithm. Basically, they're, the top ones on Udemy are hand-picked for whatever reason. They have the most reviews. There's a lot of other things in there that they're trying to do, but they do not have a sales-based algorithm here. So can I build a scalable company? Apple, yes. Google, yes. Steam, yes. Kickstarter, sort of. Kickstarter, it's, it, again, sort of. Uh, Amazon, yes. Epic, yes. Udemy, no. You cannot build a scalable company on Udemy. And that's by design because, you know, for some reason they don't want to be like these other companies here. Okay. So marketplace size, uh, billions, 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 millions, billions, billions, and millions. All right. So all of these companies have a huge marketplace. And what they really need to do is instead of making the marketplace, you know, if we just multiply, you know, 87 times four, right? So the marketplace on Udemy is going to make about 350 million, right? I think that's almost the same size as what Kickstarter does, right? Um, maybe a little bit more. But the point is, is that their marketplace should be billions, right? If you want the e-learning industry to evolve, which I don't know if they do or not, right? Um, it needs to be the billions, but they don't want that. Marketplace focus. Are they focused on growing the marketplace? Apple, yes. Google, yes. Steam, yes. Kickstarter, absolutely. Amazon and Epic. But Udemy is not focused. And we know that because they are, we go back to this page here, they're only focused on growing their subscriptions, not necessarily the consumer-based marketplace. Okay. And because of that, again, we can look at all of these factors here and you can really look at the longevity here. Now, today is a good day and who knows, maybe this goes back up to 20 and I want it to go back to 20. I want it to go back to 30, 40, 50, 60, but is it going to get there? Like, I don't really care, you know, the market doesn't care what I want, right? It's what the market wants. Now, all of these things here, if we look at this, we have the percentage, it's, it's way higher than the rest. The affiliates, it does have, right? And you know, to, to its credit, Apple, Google, and Steam don't have affiliates, but Amazon does. Amazon has, you know, the FBA here, and there are people making more money being uh, an Amazon affiliate than instructors on Udemy. So that's interesting, right? So they don't have a subscriptions here. I can't bundle my courses. It's not in the S&P 500 yet. Hey, it'd be great if it could be, 
right? There are few marketing companies that do that. And mostly it's because the algorithm, sales-based algorithm is not scalable here, right? There is a correlation between the sales-based algorithm and the amount of marketing companies, right? It's because this is usually the marketing company will get a percentage of the sales brought in, right? And if the sales-based algorithm is based on sales, then marketing companies can find a rate of return for that. And if the sales-based algorithm was scalable and not based off of reviews or uh, engagement or stuff like that, you would see a lot more of them. And then you could grow the marketplace here. You could grow a scalable company, right? So you can see here that there's a, there's a correlation between the sales-based companies, the amount of marketing companies, and I would argue the marketplace size, and whether or not people can build a scalable company on it, right? There, there is definitely here. It's, it's definitely, there's a correlation between all those things. And on top of that, I'd argue that there's a correlation between the amount of million dollar companies, companies that have people and a structure to produce products versus billion dollar companies here, right? So you can see if I'm a multi-million dollar company, I'm gonna hire a marketing company to help market my products because the algorithm is sales-based and I can go compete in the marketplace. But that's the issue here. The marketplace on Udemy isn't as competitive as let's say Apple or Google. And the reason for that, it's more or less the top people are handpicked through reviews and algorithms here versus a, not a sales-based algorithm but a review and engagement. And they're trying to be like Netflix, right? That's what they're trying to do. Now, again, Netflix isn't doing so well. And I really do hope that Udemy doesn't fall into the Netflix. Netflix could become irrelevant as there's a lot more competition. And what happens if there is competition? Now, I would say the biggest, there's two really big threats to Udemy here, okay? And again, they did a really good job. If you look at this, getting your revenue up 77% is not an easy feat. They get a lot of respect for that. And again, that's why the stock is up bigly today, right? It's just what it is. But what are some of the biggest risks here? Now they actually do talk about risks. They do talk about competition here and forward looking statements. There's uh, potential risks, uh, risk factors, and they will update the risk factors here. And one of the ones is competition. So there's two areas of competition. Now, what happens if Apple or Google or Steam or Amazon or Epic make a competitor to Udemy? What happens if that happens, okay? And what happens if I take all of these things here, right, and apply that to a marketplace? What if Apple does this? It's possible they could look at Udemy and say, hey, look, they, Udemy does an okay job. Apple could do a better job. Now, Apple does have its own university, but it, it's kind of free and it's not very good, but they could, they could just, any one of these companies could clone a marketplace like Udemy and who knows? So let's say Apple does this and you know, all of these things make it a marketplace like this. What's gonna happen to Udemy? What's gonna happen to the stock price? What's gonna happen to the company, okay? The other one is what happens if a Web3 company comes out, okay? Because a lot of these companies out there are Web2 companies and Web3 companies, you know, are decentralized. They don't really have a central thing here and everything is based more off of kind of uh, community consensus algorithms, et cetera, okay? So what happens, and this is kind of the most ideal thing to grow a company, right? So what happens if they take 5%, right? I'd see this should be the, the lighter color of green, okay? They add affiliates, they add subscriptions, they add bundles, right? It's not gonna be on the S&P 500, let's be real. But what happens if there's marketing companies for this, this, um, this potential Web3 competitor? Again, it doesn't exist now, but it could, right? Things change so fast that what happens if a Web3 company comes out? There's already lots of Web3 companies out there, and I should probably do a whole video about that. I'll do that uh, probably soon. So please be sure to like and subscribe. What happens if there's millions and billion dollar companies on this potential Web3 platform here? Because e-learning, the cat's out of the bag, right? People are going to go into e-learning because I started 10 years ago, and an 18-year-old 10 years ago is now 28. Right, that's now prime time for people who buy e-learning stuff because if you if you want to further your career, you go buy courses today. That's just what you do, right? And you have to do it or else you get left behind, right? If you want a career, that's what you got to do, right? So what happens if all of these here have scalable companies, right? 
on a sales-based algorithm and the marketplace size becomes bigger. What happens if the marketplace size in this Web3 company becomes bigger than Udemy here, right? And that could be the same for Apple or Google. What happens if, let's just say both those two companies make Apple U and Google U and they make a marketplace size worth of billions? Are they going to, are people going to even go to Udemy anymore? That's another issue. And marketplace focus, yes. So this, this is, this Web3 or if Apple were to, um, or Google were to clone this exact box, right? If they were to clone this exact box, then that would not be good for you to me. And I don't think it would be good for the stock here because there would be quite a bit of competition there. And I don't think the stock price would go very well. Okay. So again, if we take a look at the stock here, again, it's still up pretty big today. Uh, the big thing is you want to look at this bar here. And if it goes below that, uh, that's another thing. I just thought of one other thing as I was making this, uh, as I was going through this video here, and the, that is pre-sales, right? So if you don't know, the game industry is heavy on pre-sales, and there's a whole company that is dedicated to pre-sales here, okay? And that is Kickstarter here. So can I do pre-sales on Apple? Yes. Google? Yes. Steam? Yes. Kickstarter. That's the whole point of Kickstarter. It is pre-sales, right? I don't think you can do it on Amazon. Epic doesn't have that functionality and Unimi definitely doesn't have it. So why not? Now, what if we go back to our hypothetical Web3 company and say, yes, what happens if, you know, this company comes out or Apple or Google kind of clone this here? So that's kind of the big issue here. I've also updated the color, uh, color scheme here. Uh, that's basically what it is uh, here. So as you can see, this is a good analysis as to the competition. Now, it's not necessarily competition for people making courses. It's a competition for talent doing other things, right? And that's kind of the big thing right now is will people make courses at all, right? And, you know, will they go onto Udemy or will they go onto Teachable or Thinkific? Which I could probably make a whole chart about this, uh, like the pros and cons over going to Udemy or Thinkific or Teachable. So stay tuned to this channel and uh, you'll definitely see more of that. So that concludes this video. I want to know your thoughts down below. Is Udemy a good buy? Is it a sell? I want to know your thoughts. This channel does not get enough comments, so please comment down below. I will read and respond to all of them here. And it is something that this channel really needs here. So is Udemy a buy? Would you upload a course to Udemy? Are there other options for you? Again, just post your thoughts down below. If you really like this channel, you can pledge for our Kickstarter here. This is a huge bundle where you learn to trade in with uh, with algorithms in Python. You learn to trade, you learn about Web3, the metaverse, and of course, machine learning here. There are 10 levels designed to take anyone from a complete beginner to a master of trading, algorithmic trading, metaverse, Web3, and of course, machine learning here. This is a huge bundle here, and the more you pledge, the more courses you get here. So all the rewards do stack on each other here. So please pledge for this project. It really does help us out when you pledge. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.